Hey everybody, Rob Greenfield here, and today I'm gonna teach you how to forage in your own backyard. Or if you don't have a backyard, your neighbor's backyard. If they don't have a backyard, somebody's backyard. And I'm gonna introduce you to plants that are growing freely and abundantly all around us. A lot of us think that our food has to come from the grocery store and that we have to buy it, but the truth is, is there are thousands of species of foods that are both nutritious and delicious and medicinal and free, growing right in our yards, often that we think of as weeds. So I'm gonna start first with the dandelion, one of my favorites right over here. And a lot of people are probably familiar with this plant. This is, this is the dandelion, this is the flower right here, and then these are the leaves right here. And the flower turns into a seed head afterwards, and these are the seed heads that have already gone. But right here are the seeds still. And it's a beautiful thing just to blow those up. So dandelion is a very bitter um, plant. It's very nutritious, and it's a medicinal one. And I want to say that this yard that I'm in is basically a random yard. I'm in southern France. I've never forged in France before, up until a few weeks ago. And this is just the yard of the host family that I'm staying with. So uh, I don't know all the plants here. This is new foraging to me. But I'm going to introduce you to about 10 plants that there's a good chance you'll be able to find in your yards as well. So that's dandelion. Now, I don't have to go very far. And what I have right here, coming up, this looks like sorrel to me. Short, a lot, you know, plants around the world can be, um, they can come in many different shapes and sizes and colors. For example, this looks like sorrel, but check this out right here. This plant also looks like sorrel to me. Oh wow, check that out. There's this yellow spider. That probably came off the dandelion flower because it's camouflaged right in with that color. So back to the plants. So this is sorrel, and uh, sorrel has a nice uh, sour flavor. And there's another type of sorrel that I'm gonna show you in a bit. So let's walk a little bit more, see what we come across. Uh, okay. This is right here. One of my absolute favorite plants. It's very small right now. In a, in a month or two, this plant could be possibly four, four feet tall. Um, but right now, it's a small plant. And this is called lamb's quarter. So lamb's quarter is a relative to quinoa. And the leaves of lamb's quarter are often described to have sort of a nutty flavor. I don't know if it's nutty, but it's got a different flavor and I like it. Amazing thing is a lot of, you, you would look at all these green plants and you would think they all taste the same, but they definitely don't. Lamb's quarter is a relative of quinoa and you can also eat the seeds as well as a nice grain. This is one of my absolute favorites and it grows into big shrubby like greens that produce incredible amounts of food. So you'll see where I am. I'm right next to this family's garden. And what you'll see is there's almost nothing growing in this garden right now, but there's food growing all over in the yard. Tons of people have gardens, and they're pulling up the weeds, thinking that they're a problem, but it turns out that a lot of these weeds are more nutritious than what they're trying to grow in the garden. This is a perfect example. It's spring, it's uh, early April. The garden doesn't have food yet, but there's food growing all over in the yard. So let's walk down here a little bit. Now, this is a beautiful plant right here. Everybody is, most everyone is probably familiar with mint. Um, there's different types of mints and how you can identify something that's in the mint family is it has a square stem. So I'm gonna pick a piece, and when I spin it in my fingers, you'll see it's not, it's not rolling 
as a round tube. It's actually a square stem. So there's lots of different mints out there. I don't know exactly what kind of mint this is, um, but when it smells really nice and minty, you've got yourself a good mint for making tea, for putting in your lemonade, for just munching, for breath mint, a natural breath mint. And mint is very easy to plant. You can take a piece of the stem, a woody piece, poke it into the ground, and you can propagate mint and spread it all over that way. So this is a really nice mint uh, that's growing. I see more of it over here. I'm not sure what this plant is. I'm very curious about it. Something that I'd like to learn. Actually, this plant right here, I was in the Netherlands um, about three weeks ago and someone told me that this plant is called cleavers and they told me that before it is too, before it gets to the point of being, it sticks to you, they said before it gets to that point, it is, um, it's edible and I don't know how to use it but again, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a yard that I have never foraged before arriving here two weeks ago. I'm in a climate, in, in a region, I'm in South France, I've never foraged here. So I'm, I've done a lot of foraging. I've foraged over 200 species of plants in my year of growing and foraging all my food. But right now, this yard and this environment that I'm showing you, this is, uh, this is new to me. This plant right here, this looks a lot like um, a plant that I forage when I'm in Florida. And that would be, Oh, now I'm blanking on the name, but I'm, I'm, I don't think it's it. It's just something that looks a lot like it. And I want to say Bacopa, but I'm not sure. So we'll pass on that. Okay, let's see. So, okay. Oh, here we have a little more mint, beautiful mint. But right next to it, we have yarrow. And now yarrow is not so much of an edible, it's a medicinal. And so yarrow has been used as a styptic to stop bleeding. So if people got a big cut, you could actually pack the wound with this stuff. And I've also heard of it being used for horses as well uh, in the field. So this is a, a really wonderful plant to know and I, I see it around the world. So that's called yarrow. Um, Let's see, right here, we have, oh, more of, more of the, the cleaver. So this is the leaves of uh, the raspberry bush. And you can, I'm in a thorny, it's sticking to me. And, you know, raspberries are great, blackberries are great, most people know about those but a lot of people don't know that the leaves actually are really great to make a tea out of. So you can make tea out of raspberry leaves and this woods line is is covered in um, in actual raspberry bushes. So this is just a little bit of the new growth from the spring. So raspberry leaves. Another dandelion head and uh, You can also just have fun with the plants too. Nature provides not just food, not just medicine, but also entertainment, enjoyment, and love. Okay, I wanna show you one of my absolute favorites and that is right here. This is stinging nettle. And the easiest way to identify stinging nettle is it stings. So I'm gonna put my arm in here. Oh yeah, that is stinging me good. So. There's these tiny little fibrous hairs on here and they break off and it stings you. So there's plants that kind of look like this, but if it stings you, it's stinging nettle or wood nettle. Um, you can wear gloves or the sting actually is beneficial for you because um, it's actually used to uh, help with diabetes, to circulate blood flow. So I actually like to, I like to, to rub it on me. Um, now you wouldn't eat this raw because you can imagine the stings in the mouth would be could be very painful, but you can make um, nettle tea, and you can also just boil the greens and then eat the greens. And yeah, I'm really feeling that. So this is a a beautiful plant to use, um, and again, 
you know, a lot of people would cut this down to get it out of their yards because they think it's a problem, but it's actually super nutritious. I'm gonna walk over here where there's um, some gar uh, some onions that I'm gonna show you. <clears throat> so all along this, there's food going all over. Okay, here's another one. Now, see a caterpillar right here. Whoops, fell off. Okay, so. As I said, I'm foraging in a new place, and I don't know the plants here, I don't have a guidebook. I, I, there's a lot of plants that grow throughout the world. Now, one of my favorite plants is that I forage in the United States is broadleaf plantain, also called plantago. And I haven't seen that in this yard, but just this morning I looked at this plant here, and I think this is indeed a plantago, but I think what this is is a narrow leaf and the reason why is because if you break this, when you break this, oh, it's not doing it. I'm going to find it. Okay. When I break this, you can see the veins actually separating there and that's I think a pretty telltale sign. I mean, if this was broadleaf plantain, I'd know for sure. But this tells me that this is probably a narrow leaf plantain, and this is a great medicinal and great edible as well. And I'm seeing this all over here now. Now, right next to this, all over the ground, you can see these little caps. And let's see if they're, okay, here's one with the, this is acorn. And so, uh, acorn is a ma majorly overlooked food. In fact, human humanity may not exist without the acorn. Many cultures, 50% um, of their calories, their food, came from acorns. So there is a process in order to be able to eat them, but this is an overlooked food and it's growing all over here. Let's see. So. I mentioned this plant before that I said looked like a plant in Florida and I remembered it <laughs> and now I forgot it again. Um, Go-to cola. So I don't think this is go-to cola but this is a plant that I foraged in Florida and it's one of the most bitter plants that there are but it's brain food. Another one is dollar weed which looks similar to this but just round and these grow in moister environments which interestingly um, you can see down here, they're growing down here where water would flow rather than up there in the driest part. So they could be related, but um, not sure. But again, this video is not a identification. It's really, the idea of this is just to spark your brain. I mean, just in the last 10 minutes, how many different plants have I found that are edible and medicinal just walking around this yard that I'm unfamiliar with. This is really just about sparking your mind and realizing that your yard could be a great source of nutrition and medicine. So there's a couple more plants I want to show you and uh, we're just about done. This is a beautiful plant. I, I think maybe they would call this buttercup Mmm, smells wonderful. You don't have to pick the, all the plants either to get a wonderful benefit from them. You can just smell them too. So many beautiful flowers. Um, okay, here is something that I know is a mint because of the square stem. I'm gonna smell it. Not a minty smell. I'm not sure what that is, but this is worth looking into. And you can see a lot more dandelion here. Dandelion is absolutely one of my top rep recommendations. So right over here, I found a different plant. I mentioned sorrel before. Well, this is, this is called wood sorrel. And this has got a really nice, like, tangy, lemony flavor. 
Looks like clover. A lot of people think it's clover, but it's not. It grows like, you know, this is one piece right here. So this is wood sorrel. There's some dog hair on it. Perfect place to eat food that might have been peed on by dogs. So just avoid that if you don't want that. Uh, simple as that. You know, use common sense. You got to start thinking. I'm going to be putting out more foraging videos that will go into those sorts of things and help you with that. Okay, one last plant. And we're actually going to step outside the yard for this one. Into the little field next door. And this is wild onions, or leeks, or garlic. They're all in the allium family, and I found them to be abundant in a lot of places. So I just found these the other day. I was actually out here to take a pee, and I looked down and I was peeing on some onions. Oh, I want to mention this plant right here. In the mint family, I believe, not sure what it is, but it's an interesting one that I want to learn. And I want to show you some more onions over here. So, here. Um, more onion right here and here, here. So I think if, you, if you've ever mowed your lawn and all of a sudden you smell onions, it's because you're mowing onions. It's same for mint. Sometimes you might mow your lawn and you smell mint. It's because you're mowing mint. Now, I think this might be leeks. There's leeks and there's ramps and there's wild onion and there's wild garlic and there's a whole lot of different varieties and I don't know them all. But they all work great as onions. So, mm, what's this right here? Okay, so this would be clover, I believe, and clover is edible. Um, and this grows all over the place. You can eat flowers and leaves. So, that's just a little introduction to foods that can be growing freely and abundantly right in your backyard. If you have a backyard, learn the foods that are in it. If you don't have a backyard, talk to your friends and share learning with, with your friends. And uh, when you do this, you will find that food is growing freely and abundantly all around you. I'll have a lot more videos coming on foraging to teach you some of the more basics of how to forage. So if you got a lot out of this video, please share it, please like it, and if you have questions, post them in the comments. And uh, if you haven't, make sure you subscribe as well. So I love you all very much, and I'll see you again real soon. Happy foraging! <laughs>